So to give you an example of some of the software that is in use for the data, man database management systems, we've already encountered Excel, of course. People use that quite commonly to manage their data, even though, as described earlier, we would not consider that a database. And now we know why we won't consider that a, a database, because it allows us to do stupid things. There are other simple sort of desktop level database management systems such as FileMaker and Access, and there are others that are simple enough with uh, easy enough ability to learn how to manipulate them to build forms for data entry and things like that all on the desktop. And then going to the next level, we have database management systems that are let's say industrial or enterprise. These are systems where you need to hire a database manager just to keep the software running. It's heavy duty. So there are three, I've given three examples of those. One is PostgreSQL, which has the interesting characteristic that much of the GIS capabilities that you see in sophisticated websites are built around databases with Postgres and PostGIS. Increasingly, MySQL is, in, is adding geospatial capabilities as well. I put asterisks on both of these software packages because they are free open source database management systems, even though they're heavy duty enterprise level. And then another is Oracle, which is not at all free, but is used in very large companies to run very large database management systems. So it's robust and heavy duty. This is a small sampling of all the database management software that one might find, but they're common ones. In my work with collections, the two pieces of software that I encounter, three, there are three, but the two database management software systems that I encounter most are Excel and Access, followed quickly by MySQL. And the reason they're followed quickly by MySQL is for a simple reason that the specify database management system is built around MySQL. So that's why that one is common. So my second list is an example of specific software that has been written around one of these other database management systems it's for the specific purpose of managing biodiversity data. So they've taken something generic and built something based for biodiversity on top of it. So some examples of those are Arctos, which is built upon or Oracle database management system. And Arctos has the interesting and unique characteristic among these all is that it is a collaborative online software or uh, web-based database management system for multiple institutions all at the same time across all taxa and in fact even into geology. So at the moment Arctos houses 1.8 million records from, I'm not sure how many collections, but on the order of 30 different collections. And I don't know how many institutions, but something on the order of 15 institutions. So an interesting characteristic of this is that it is very, very sophisticated in its capabilities. It uses all of the authorities for lookups. It has um, the ability to capture and relate to images. It has the ability to capture and, and relate to project information over time and references. It is quite well developed in terms of its capabilities. The philosophy behind it is that science should not be limited to a spreadsheet. Science should be able to grow and science should be able to be rich in the data that are managed by it. Furthermore, a collection should not be limited by its resources, that is by the money in hand. And so this online resource, being collaborative, is meant to allow 
institutions that don't have funds to still participate in the richness of scientific endeavor with relation to collections and to do so in a collaborative way, in a community built around this multi-institutional, multi-collection museum database called Arctos. The next one that I want to talk about is Specify. Specify and Arctos come from the same origins in terms of the structure of the underlying database. Both of them were developed at Berkeley where I work and it was basically Arctos that was the reason that I was hired at Berkeley to begin with, to create something that later became Arctos in the hands of a different programmer at the University of uh, Alaska Museum. So this uh, development in that respect and <coughs> along a different path, Specify was developed at the University of Kansas. They share much of the same underlying structure. Specify, it differs from Arctos in the sense that it is a, um, a desktop based des uh, specimen management system. It is not meant to be multi-institutional but is still meant to have and to, to support the richness of scientific information. We'll see a video that talks plenty more about Specify, so I won't say more about it right now. Going back to my list, there are several others, and this list is by no means exhaustive. There are plenty of different database management systems in the world. Uh, the next one I don't know a great deal about. It is called Biota. It was developed by um, Rob Caldwell. And is again, this is again meant to be a desktop system. And it is meant to be free for download and use. Uh, I can't, I don't know much to tell you about how it works or how rich the data that it uh, allows you to manage. And it's not one of the ones that we'll talk about in depth here, but I wanted to get it on the list for you to be able to look at. After that comes a body of software called EMU for um, Electronic Museum developed by KE Software in Australia. KE EMU is another one of these very large scale, potentially quite rich database management systems and comes with a very tight attachment to the company, let's say. It doesn't allow a great deal of customization on your own. Customization should go through the company. But it does have quite sophisticated capabilities. It's a, often a software of choice for very large museums who would like to consolidate all of their collections throughout the museum into a single software system. After that is Symbiota, which will be talked about in detail. And I don't know anything about it, so I won't pretend to know anything about it. I'll wait for them to talk about it in detail. And the same is true for Brahms, which I saw for the first time today. Now, how do you choose? I've only given a short list of all the possibilities. And I want to give you or arm you with some of the considerations that you have to make when you decide what to use. If you're not already using something or if you're not forced to use something by someone else. So the first of those characteristics would be whether or not the choice allows relational capabilities. Is it a relational database? In other words, I would like to dissuade you from continuing to use Excel if you want to make your life and the life of others around you easier in the future for reasons we've already described. I'd rather that you used a database. So, the next question is, what are the limitations of the databases that you choose? If you have huge 
collections, then maybe Microsoft Access is not the best choice because there's a limitation on the size of a Microsoft Access database in very strict terms, and that is the amount of data inside of it, and then in some less strict terms, the bigger it gets, the slower it gets. So that's a consideration. I don't know what the largest potential data set among the people in this room would be, but I have some expectation that if it is entomological, it would outgrow Microsoft Access before you're finished. If it's botanical, it might also outgrow Microsoft Access before you're finished. For anything else, Microsoft Access is probably sufficient. Which gets to the very next point, and that is scalability. By scalability, I mean if you make a choice now, will you regret it? In other words, will you outgrow it? Will you not be able to keep that database in the future because of what you're trying to do outgrows it? It could outgrow it in terms of the size of the database. It could outgrow it in terms of what the database is actually capable of doing. So that's something that you need to keep in mind as well. After that, everything else is related to cost in one way or another. The cost consists of what it might require to buy the software in the beginning. So if we look at our list on the top, Arctos costs you nothing. It's already there. Th it depends on who you are. If you're a big museum, they would like you to contribute to the maintenance of the system, but there's no set cost to buying anything. Arctos already runs. Specify also has no cost, and in fact comes with support, helping you to get your data into Specify and ongoing to keep things working and to upgrade between versions. Biota is free and open. I don't think it has a support package with it. KE Emu comes with a very high initial cost and a continued high cost if you ever want to change it. That's why only the big museums tend to use KEMU. Symbiota and Brahms, I will let them speak to. After that come the considerations of whether or not you can change the software to do what you want to do with it. Almost never does something that comes to you pre-built have everything you want the way you want it? If that's important to you, then you need to consider how hard will it be to change it. In some cases, like the big collaborative ones, Arctos or Specify, you will have to voice your concerns to those who are capable of making the changes and hope that they make the changes. That's not very flexible if you just want to get your work done. So in that case, that might be a reason not to choose one of those two, is because you want to be able to customize something yourself. For data capture, this may be a huge concern because if you're unable to customize, that may dramatically affect the cost of actually doing the data capture. So better to use something that is appropriate to the process rather than to be forced into something just because it already exists and has a low cost. Make the balance and make the right choice based on customizability. Support, I talked about already. If you go into Arctos or Specify, there are people there who can help you that are dedicated to doing so. In the others, I, I don't know. You have to consider that. Sustain sustainability is a very important question for the very long term. You have to ask yourself, and you may not get an answer, asking yourself or even asking others, will Arctos or will Specify exist in 10 years? Will there be support to keep the support going for you? Will the software still run? And then maintenance is 
how much of an effort is there on your part to keep the thing working? If you go and make for yourself an entirely customized Microsoft Access database, and you build it yourself, and it does everything you want exactly perfectly, that's great. But you're in a museum, and you live on museum time, and you will not be the last person in the museum. So somebody else will inherit what you made. Will they be able to take it and maintain it over time? Or even you, what will you do when Microsoft changes access and no, what you built no longer works? Will you be able to fix it? All these are difficult questions to know the answers to in advance. You have to sort of intuit what will be the most important aspects in the long term and use all of these sorts of questions to make the argument about which you need to choose.